Coming up on today's episode of the Airborne Unlimited, Boeing debuts the 78710 Dreamliner with President Trump. Multi-GP Drone Racing announces the 2017 Multi-GP International Open. And yet another NIMBY group looks to stem growth of Montauk Airport. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's February 20th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Boeing 78710 Dreamliner, the third member of the 787 Dreamliner family, made its debut Friday at Boeing, South Carolina. Thousands of employees at the North Charleston, South Carolina site celebrated the event along with President Trump and South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster. What's happening here at Boeing, South Carolina is a true American success story, said Dennis Muhlenberg, Boeing chairman, president, and CEO. In just a few short years, our term has transformed a greenfield site into a modern aerospace production facility that is delivering 787s to airlines all over the world and supporting thousands of U.S. jobs in the process. The 787-10 will now be prepared for its first flight in the coming weeks. This airplane, the most efficient in its class, is the result of years of hard work and dedication from our Boeing teammates, suppliers and community partners in South Carolina and across the globe, said Kevin McAllister, Boeing Commercial Airplanes President and CEO. President Trump said, our goal as a nation must be to rely less on imports and more on products made here in the USA. Trump also vowed to enforce trade rules and stop foreign cheating. Boeing will begin deliveries of the 787-10 in 2018 based on 149 orders from nine customers across the globe. The 2017 Multi-GP International Open will be held at the AMA National Headquarters in Muncie, Indiana, August 9th through 13th, 2017. The Multi-GP International Open plans to be a fun and educational time for all involved, with the fun flies open to all, as well as multiple competitions, both racing and freestyle, workshops, and summit meetings during the event. Multi-GP Drone Racing is pulling out all the stops to bring the world one of the most unique drone racing events of the year. Because of the vast size of the AMA headquarters, there will be a total of eight FPV flight zones, eight different fields set up specifically for the style of flying that will take place on that field, such as team racing, standard racing, freestyle, wings, spec, etc. Multi-GP understands that the FPV freestyle is as an important component of the sport of FPV as racing, and this year we will be holding freestyle competitions during the International Open. Other attractions will include a crash course gauntlet, a full vendor village of companies showing off their latest and greatest technology, an FPV sports summit, and various FPV-related workshops. After the break, NIMBYs attack yet another general aviation airport. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The NIMBYs are at it again, this time in New York's Long Island. A group which calls itself the Airport Noise Citizens Advisory Committee has written a letter to East Hampton recommending that they buy Montauk Airport to prevent or at least slow traffic growth in the future. 
The chairman of the group, David Gruber, has a critic of operations at nearby East Hampton Airport and opines that if the town does not buy Montauk Airport, the owners could apply for AIP grants to expand and improve the airport, bringing more helicopter and jet traffic. Therefore, Gruber wants the same controls over Montauk Airport as the town imposes on East Hampton Airport. The town is waiting for a decision by U.S. Supreme Court on curfews put in place in 2015, but a finding in favor of the restrictions seems unlikely at best. Gruber also posits that the town could buy the airport using money from the Community Preservation Fund under the premise that the airport is a recreational facility. Still, an East Hampton official thinks the town is unlikely to want to own a second airport and does not think that using public money is a viable option if the airport is to be maintained as an airport. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Arrow Video of the Week. Final lift off and left. Watch a Fokker 100 execute an approach to an airport with a thunderstorm sitting over the end of the runway. No go-arounds allowed. Search This Will Be a Full Stop Landing on YouTube. After these messages, Airbus gets sued. Come experience the best of model aviation at the AMA Expo East in Secaucus, New Jersey. 100 booths, flying demos, make and take activities for kids, and many guest speakers including AMA Ambassador Hoot Gibson. Visit amaexpo.com to get your tickets and we'll see you February 24th to 26th. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Austrian Federal Ministry of Defense and Sports has filed a criminal complaint against Airbus Defense and Space and Eurofighter Jagdflugzeug based on suspected willful and fraudulent deception. The Republic of Austria is represented by the lawyer and legal advisor of the Republic of Austria and has joined the proceedings against the two Airbus companies as a private party. Veteran NASA astronaut Dr. Ellen Ochoa, the first Hispanic woman to go to space and 11th director of NASA's Johnson Space Center, will be inducted into the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame. Ochoa joined NASA in 1988 as a research engineer at Ames Research Center in Silicon Valley, California, and flew in space four times. The nomination period for the Catherine Wright Trophy is now open through March 31st. The trophy was established in 1981 by the Gates Learjet Corporation and is made annually to an individual who has contributed to the success of others or made a personal contribution to the advancement of the art, sport, and science of aviation and spaceflight over an extended period of time. The two Augusta Westland AW-189 super medium twin-engine helicopters operated by Bell Air of Denmark have exceeded 6,000 flight hours as of January, setting a new milestone. This achievement confirms Bell Air as the world fleet leader for the AW-189 model in a demanding operational environment. Embraer has named Michael Amofatano as the president and CEO of its executive jet business unit. Amofatano will succeed Marco Tullio Pellegrini, who will assume another leadership position to be announced soon. The change will become effective as of March 1st, 2017. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. 
The National Aviation Hall of Fame says it will not sell a propeller dating back to 1915, which was signed by Orville Wright. The eight-foot spruce prop is the only known aircraft artifact known to have been signed by one of the Wright brothers. Congressman Mike Turner received information that the Hall of Fame was considering selling artifacts to shore up its finances and called for an investigation into the issue, though according to Hall President and Vice Chairman Michael Chiello, any discussion of selling the artifact was tabled two years ago. A former trustee donated the propeller to the Hall in 2004. At the time, it was valued at $37,000. It was later found in the collection, and in 2013, it was appraised at $275,000. Giello said that conservation of the prop for display was not consistent with the Hall's financial and business plans, and the trustees considered selling it, but only for display at another site, such as the National Air and Space Museum or the Wright Airplane Factory in Dayton. An appraisal history of the prop points to its use on the Wright-built float plane. It was signed at Orville Wright's home in Oakwood, Ohio in 1944. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. And do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest in aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.